Hello and welcome to Computer Science 20S. This is Liberty Basic Unit 1, Lesson 3, Conditional Statements, Part 2. We previously looked at the if-then statement. Now we're going to add on the else. Uh, very similar to what we did in Scratch when we had an if-else uh, bracket like this kind of thing. We're also going to look at random numbers in this lesson as well. All right, so sometimes we need to do something if something is not true. This is the else part. Uh, for example, suppose you want to input two numbers and determine which one is bigger. Pretty useless program, but it's just an example to begin with. Give us something to work with. Uh, so here's a sample run. Enter number one, enter number two. We got 56 and 72, and it obviously picks out that 72 is the bigger number. How are we going to do that with an if and else? Here's a pseudocode, and again, I encourage you always to make a plan. Uh, it makes your coding go much, much smoother. When you have a plan in place, you've thought things through before you begin coding. So we're going to get the first number, we're going to get the second number, and then we're going to determine which one's bigger, and then we're going to display it. You can probably do this in your head. I certainly won't argue with that. Um, but as the programs get more and more complicated, a plan is more and more necessary. So here's the syntax. The general format is if something something, then do something because the if was true, else do something different because the if was false. And you'll notice the indentation structure here. We've got if else and the end if all line up in a nice straight line and that sort of models how scratch does it with this if else uh, bracket type thing as well so indentation is important as well uh, here's the actual code input number one input number two number one is bigger than number two then print number one is bigger otherwise or else print number two is bigger and uh, again indentation note be sure to indent the true and false blocks this is the true block and this is the else block, the false block, and they should be indented. Uh, use the semicolon here so that the is bigger appears on the same line as the number itself. Uh, if we look back at the tax question from the previous lesson, it assumed that the PST was zero if it was not needed. Uh, if PST is equal to one, then the PST tax is equal to the amount times 0 0.07. And if, this may not always be the case, there could be other examples. Uh, maybe we should have done it this way. We should have said if PST is equal to 1, that's a flag, that PST tax is equal to the amount times 0 0.07. Otherwise, or else, the PST tax equals 0. And it might be a good idea to get into this habit kind of thing. If you're going to run this program more than once, you might need to reset the PST tax back equal to 0 for this particular time. So it's probably a good idea to make sure that you look after both the conditions here. Here's a practice assignment. The program is to be created that allows the user to guess a number. If they get it right, they win, and if they get it wrong, well, they lose. There's just one chance. We're going to work on this later when we introduce loops in Liberty Basic. I know that you've seen loops in Scratch, so it really won't be that hard. So to get a random number between 1 and 10, use this command. In, Lib in Scratch, it's very simple. You just say, pick a random number between 1 and 10. It's a little more challenging that, than that in Liberty Basic. Um, actual computer language. Um, Scratch is probably doing something like this in the background. So I've got random number is equal to the integer of RND of 1 times 10 plus 1. And let's just have a look at exactly how this works here. Uh, to get a random number between 1 and 100, uh, we're going to use this command int of RND of 1 times 100 plus 1. So these are the two key, um, let me just see if I can find something here to highlight a little bit. These are the key uh, numbers right here this 100 and this one here. Those are the two things that you're between. So it's between 1 and 100. I say here, what does int do? Look it up in the help file. You're responsible for learning it. I'm just going to tell you. I'm not so sure that that's wise anymore, making you guys look that up. So I'm just going to show you how this works. Um, so what it does is it takes, uh, we're going to use order of operations here. Let's get rid of these. Okay, so RND of 1 is going to create a random number between 0 and 1. So it's some decimal number. Uh, let's just make it easy here. Let's say it comes up with 0 0.473. It's usually a three-digit number between 0 and 1. So that's RND of 1. And then based on our brackets here, we're going to multiply by 100. So 0.473 multiplied by 100 is going to give me 47.3. And then I take the int of that, so what it does, it just drops off the decimal part, takes the integer portion, so it gives me a 47, and then I add 1 to the end, and my random number that I've got is 48. Most of this I think you'll understand. You'll probably wonder why do I have to add on the 1. If you want the random number to be between 1 and 100, it could actually pick 0 
zero five four, something like that. Multiply that by 100, you're going to get uh, 5.4. Take the integer portion of that and you get, sorry, multiply by 100. 1, 2, 5.4. Take the integer portion of that, you're going to get 5 is your round number. But if I selected 0 0.006, multiply that by 100, you're going to get Point six. take the integer portion of that, and you're going to get zero. So if you want it to be between 1 and 100, you have to have this plus 1 on the end. So this is the code that you use. All you have to do is replace the 1 and the 100 with the numbers that you want your random number to be in between. Okay, here's the sample run for the program that I suggested that you do. Uh, guess a number. You input 4, and you say, no, too bad. The correct number was 7. Uh, this is the else part. Uh, guess a number. I say 3, and this time I say, yes, you're right. So... Pretty easy little thing. Um, you should write the pseudocode first, write the code, test the code. And I'm going to work through the pseudocode with you right now because planning is very important. So we're going to determine the random number. We're going to get the user guess. We're going to check to see if it's correct. If yes, is, uh, if it's yes, if it is correct, then we're going to print it. And the else is the wrong. Okay, so you should take a moment and um, using that pseudocode, Pause the video here, try that little practice assignment, just the guessing the number game. Pause here, please. All right, let's move into the hand in. This is hand in number three. Mr. Bennett wants a program to determine if a student receives honors or not. Honors is defined as an overall average of greater than or equal to 85%. Your program will allow uh, me to use enter four, four marks, calculate the average, and then determine if the student receives honors or not. Here's what the sample run should look like. It should say enter first mark, 45, enter second mark, 67, enter third mark, 89, enter fourth mark, 97. The student's average is 74.5. This student does not get honors because the mark is less than the honor cutoff, which is 85 in this particular case. Here's another sample run. This time, when you add them up and divide by 4, the student's average is 90. The student does not get honors. Please note here a very common mistake that most people get. Uh, wrong is you have to have something like mark one plus mark two plus mark three plus mark four divided by four. Notice the brackets here. If you don't have the brackets, what you end up with is something like this. And I see that I capitalized some variables and the other ones I didn't. So I should probably fix that, make them all the same. If you didn't use the brackets, then what you get is uh, it only divides mark 4 by 4, and everybody's going to get honors. So make sure you include brackets. So uh, you should write the pseudocode, you should write the code, and then you should test it and make sure that it works. That is the end of Lesson 3. Good luck.